Okay, so this is the second page to the unit eight review on statistics. And so for question 14 and 15, they want you to create a modified box and whisker for the following sets. So to do a modified, make sure we're always looking for outliers. So when you see that clue word modified, make sure you look for outliers. So within the modified box and whisker, we still need our five number summary. So that means we want our lowest value, our first quartile, our second quartile, which is also called the median, and then our highest value. So the median is the same as quartile two, so I'm just gonna use M, but remember that does mean quartile two as well. So if I look at my list of numbers, it's in order. My lowest value is one, my highest value is 20, and then I have eight numbers here. So because I ha have eight numbers, I wanna split, I have my first half and then I have my second half, right? So if it's an even set of numbers, we always wanna go ahead and write out, here's my first half, here's my second half. So there's four numbers in the first half and there's four numbers in the last half. So when I go to find my median, because there is no true middle number, I need to average. I can also just look to say, okay, what's the number in between or in the middle of 11 and 13? and that would be 12, okay? Or I can average, right? So to find my median, I could also do 11 plus 13 divided by two, and then that gives me my median. So now for quartile one, I have to do the same thing because I don't have a true middle number of a set of four. I need to look to say, okay, what's in the middle here? And so I can see that in between nine and 11 is 10, so quartile one, would be 10 because it's the median of the lower half or first half. Or I could average, right? I could do nine plus 11 divided by two, which is 20 over two or 10. So I can do it either way, right? I could just look to see what's in the middle or I could actually average those numbers. So quartile three, I need to do the same thing. So I can say, okay, what's in between 14 and 17, right? Because those are the two middle numbers of the second half. And I can look and try to figure it out, but this one's a little trickier. So I'm just gonna do quartile three. I'm gonna add my two numbers and divide by two. So then that would be 15.5, okay? So now I have my five number summary, right? That's what this is called, my five number summary. And if I was just doing a box and whisker, I would go ahead and start making that, but I want to see if I have any outliers. So to find my outliers, I'm going to do find my IQR, right? So my interquartile range is when I do Q3 minus Q1. So I want to find my IQR, my interquartile range. I'm going to do Q3 minus Q1 and then multiply that by 1.5. So let me get this little paper here. I'm running out of room. So I'm going to do 15.5 minus 10. So Q3 minus Q1, and then times 1.5. So this will be 5.5 times 1.5, and then multiply that, so 8.25. So then my outliers um, are going to be any number that goes beyond that value, right? So I know that quartile three is 15.5. So what I'm looking for is does 20 lie within this range? So if I do my upper bound, so my upper bound, so I'm just gonna do UB. My quartile three is 15.5 plus my outlier value, which is 8.25. And then when I add those two numbers together, I'm gonna get 23.75. And so I cannot go beyond 23.75. So 20 is okay, right? Now if this was 24, that's not good. 25 is not good, but 20 is okay. And then for my lower bound, I'm gonna take quartile one, which is 10, and then I'm gonna subtract 8.25. And then that will give me 1.75. So then I look here, 
So that means I cannot have a number lower than 1.75. And so if I look at this, a number lower than 1.75 is one. So that makes one my outlier. So if one is my outlier, I don't want to graph my whisker to that. I'm going to graph it to nine. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and do a box and whisker plot. So I'm going to do a scale. So I have numbers from one to 20. So count by fives, and then I'm going to go ahead and plot my lower value, which was one, and then quartile one, my median, which is at 12, and quartile three, and my highest, okay? So I did my, I went ahead and did my original lower, right? Because I need to show my outlier. And then quartile one, which is at 10, my median, which is at 12, quartile 3, which is at 15.5, and then my highest value, which is at 20. Then the three numbers in the middle create my box. And then my whiskers extend to my um, lowest and highest. But remember, 1 is an outlier, so my new low value is 9. So then my whisker only goes to 9 now. And then my outlier 1, which is just a dot now, doesn't connect. And then my highest value of 20 is OK, so then I can extend my whisker to 20. OK? All right, so that's number 14. And 15 is the same, so I'm going to go ahead and skip 15. OK, and then now for 16, we have to find, or 16 through 21, we need to find the standard deviation. So for question 16, what I want to do is list my numbers. OK, so let's get that up just a little. OK, so I want to list out all my numbers. And then I want to find um, my average. So I can do x minus x bar. And then I'm going to square those. OK, so I need to find my average first. So to find my average, I need to add up all my numbers. So I'm going to add up this. And I think that gives me 95. So. And then divide by 8. Okay. And so then 95 divided by 8 is 11.875. So I'm going to have that just be 11.9. Okay. So then what I need to do to find my standard deviation is I need to do 11.9 um, and subtract that from all of these numbers. So I'm going to do 3 minus 11.9. So I'm going to get my calculator out. So 3 minus 11.9. And then I'm going to square that number. So I'm just doing 3 minus 11.9 and then squaring. Okay, And I have to do that all the way down, right? So I need to do 9 minus 11.9. And then square and 11 minus 11.9 and then square and then this will be the same because it's 11 again and then 13 minus 11.9 and squared And these would both be 2.1. 
Okay, so now that I have that part done, I want to find my variance, right? So I have that table, and so once I get to here, I want to find the average of those numbers, right? So I want to average, and then I know to average, that means I need to add up all of those values, and then divide by however many we have, okay? So I would add up those numbers. and then divide by how many I have. So then I know that the variance is 20.61, right? So whenever I average, that finds me the variance. And then to find the standard deviation, I just need to square root that number. So my standard deviation is around a 4.5, okay? And there's my standard deviation. So the key thing here is to remember that once you find this table, right, you can do that pretty easily. A little time consuming, but you can do that. Is to remember that you need to add all these numbers up and divide by however many you have. That does not find you the standard deviation, that finds you the variance. And then when you square root it, that gives you your standard deviation. And then one way you can kind of check it is to see how far off the average you are and you should be pretty close to those numbers, right? So this is around a 12. So if you add 12 to that, so 12 plus, so your average is somewhere in the middle here. So 12 plus 4.5 is 16.5, right? You should not go all the way to the end, but you should be pretty close. So 16.5 is somewhere in the middle here, so that's good. And then 12 minus 4.5 is like 7 point something. And so you should be somewhere in the middle over here, right? That's how you can kind of check to see if your variance makes sense. So you should never be all the way out to the end, right? You should be somewhere in the ends. Okay, so that was 16. So for 17 is just making sure that you know how to find the standard deviation using notation or concepts that we've learned along the way. So here they're telling you that um, your variance is equal to 16, right? This symbol right here means variance. So that means for your standard deviation, you would just square root that. So the square root of 16 is 4. And so then that would be your standard deviation. For number 18, still making sure you know notation. So if you remember that we know that our variance is this formula here. So this means you add up the difference squared divided by however many you have and that gives you the variance. So then that means I take what did it add up to? 84 divided by n which is the number of data values which is 7. So I'm going to do 84 divided by 7 which is 12. Okay, not my standard deviation yet, right? This is still just my variance. So now that I know my variance is 12 then I have to square root that, right? So then for number 18, I know my standard deviation is the square root of 12, which is just 2 root 3. Okay. All right, for 19, this is a normal distribution curve. So the middle number here, this is my average, so 50 is my average. And I know to find these values, I have to add my standard deviation. So to go from 50 to 53, I added 3. From 53 to 56, I also added 3. So that means my standard deviation is 3. Right? Because how do we create our normal curve? We add our standard deviation as we go or subtract it. Okay, so question number 20, find the standard deviation if your variance is 7.3. So then my standard deviation is the square root of my variance.
which is about 2.7. Okay. All right, so 21 is like 18, right? So here is the sum of the squared terms and the data set is 20. So, we're gonna, so we did the sum was 84 divided by seven. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. So I do 100 divided by 20 gives me five. Okay, not the standard deviation, that's still just my variance. So then my standard deviation is just the square root of five, which is about 2.2, .2. okay? All right, let's take a look at number 22. So for this one here, it says that seven people are sitting in a room. So that means you have seven people. The average age for all seven people is 32. So their average is 32 years. And then a person that is 50 leaves the room. And then what is the average of the six remaining people? So this is getting us to remember the formula, right? So the average is the sum of all the values divided by n. We Remember that means to add, so we add up all the numbers and divide by n. Okay, so this is that formula. So I know the average is 32, so I'm gonna put 32 in for x bar. I don't know the total. And I know that there's seven people. So now what I want to figure out is, well, what did all their ages add up to when all seven people were in there? So I'm running out of room here. So I'm going to multiply both sides by seven. So 32 times seven is 224. And that equals the total um, years, right? So that 224 is the total age for all seven people. So if all seven people add up to 224 and someone who is 50 walks out of the room. So now I'm gonna subtract that age. So I'm gonna do 224 minus 50. So now the 50 year old is gone. So now that new sum is 174. And so instead of dividing by seven, I'm gonna divide by six. Why am I dividing by six? Because there's only six people left in the room. So I had to find the new total and divide by the new number of people. So then the new average is 29 years. Okay. All right, and then let's take a look at 23. So 23 is you're just um, trying to classify what type of study you have. So survey is when people ask questions. Um, observational is when you're removed from whatever is happening and you're just observing and recording data, recording facts. Experimental is usually when you have um, uh, you know, something that you're testing, a product that you're testing to see if it's valid or not. So. A uh, group of students are interested in knowing if the number of times they can sink a basketball is related to the color of the basketball. So the student shoots a series of baskets and they record their success using a regulation colored basketball. They then switch to a blue colored basketball and shoot the same series of baskets. And so for them, they're um, recording data and they have two different basketballs, right? And they're experimenting whether or not does the color matter or not, okay? So in this case, because they're experimenting to see if something works, this would be experimental. Does the color matter or not, okay? Um, this, and then for the next one here, it says they're interested in knowing does exercise prevent colds. So they randomly select a sample of people and record the amounts of weekly exercise and the number of colds last year. So 
So for this one right here, so because they are looking to see does exercise prevent colds, okay, and they're recording um, weekly exercise and the number of colds, then they're just observing like what happened here. Okay, so a candidate for public office wants to know the percentage of citizens that favor a flat rate income. So she sends out a questionnaire, meaning she's going to ask questions. So then we would have to gather their opinions. So then that would be a survey or a census. Okay. All right, question number 24. We're checking to see if we know about the different types of sampling that we have. So a news show wants to get feedback on the popularity of the reporter, so they ask viewers to participate in an online poll. So the viewers have to select themselves and volunteer to do this, so then this would be considered self-selected. For part B, each member of the population is assigned a unique number, so that usually leads to meaning we're probably going to do a random sample. So the numbers are placed in a bowl and then thoroughly mixed. Then a blindfolded researcher selects 25 numbers from the bowl. So then that would be a simple random sample or random sample because they're randomly choosing the numbers that were assigned uniquely. Okay. Part C, to conduct a national survey, the population is divided. So they're dividing the group, so that probably means we're going to be doing stratified geographically into north, east, south, and west, so they're dividing up the group. And then within each group, 100 people are chosen to answer a series of questions. So this would be a stratified sample sampling. So dividing into groups, so that's the clue for that. And then for D, to determine the population of yellow M&Ms produced by a factory, Kevin goes to the store in the neighborhood and he buys the first 10 bags and then he counts the M&M. So because it was the first 10, that would be convenience. So for E, um, a company's HR department wants to pick a sample of employees and ask how they feel about company policies. Starting with the 10th person, so need a starting point, they, who arrives to work, then they ask every fourth person. So every fourth person, is a system, right? So you go from the tenth and then you choose every fourth and that would be system or systematic. So are any of the sampling methods in 24 biased? So remember the random sample is the most um, unbiased, right? So bias is not likely for random. Because you're volunteering you would say that yes there's going to be bias because the people who answer that question are the people who are um, volunteering themselves have a strong opinion about things so there's definitely bias for that one stratified is uh, bias is less likely because you're choosing the hundred people it doesn't say specifically if it's random or not but it's less likely to occur so it could have bias but less likely Convenience always has bias, and then systematic bias is less likely, okay? All right, and then for um, Stu, um, so the next video will pick up on 26.